Uh, not to correct uh, Justice Rubenstein spoke so beautifully, when, I, when, when there's something which I didn't understand, this is actually Alan's 30th book, so I'll just say I didn't understand Rashi when you said it was 25 books or whatever. This year actually... Uh, this year, uh, for those people uh, who don't know, Alan celebrated 50 years at Harvard, which he's just retiring. You know, he was the youngest uh, tenured professor at Harvard. Uh, and 75 years, he just celebrated his 75th birthday. And his 30th book, which is his autobiography. Uh, but when he came to Israel, I knew he was going to, going to come to Israel, I turned to my good friend uh, Amos, who I know for many years from the Air Force, and I said, let's not make the, do something for him, but not a living funeral, or not do something to entertain you simply, but to challenge and to inspire those people who are here tonight. Because actually from the people who are sitting here, from here hopefully will come the next book, the next case for Israel. Because just as Alan wrote the case for Israel many years ago, and as soon as he wrote it, I said, Alan, you know, the people here in Israel don't know how to make the case for Israel. And inside a minute, we had it translated into Hebrew. And the Air Force started handing it out to all their officers, and Shkedi gives it to all the people in El Al to our ambassadors of this. Because Alan, or as the people who know him, and I have the privilege to represent him in Israel in many things, uh, the people who know him know him as Avi, because my real connection goes back to Borough Park, where my Aunt Lila was very good friends with his mother, Claire. And Alan is an agnostic. He has no God, but he certainly, certainly has a mother who he loved and respected. Uh, Avi was someone who asked tough questions, and it's the question which is the holiest thing, just like in the Talmudic story of the bird which is, has one leg on one side and the other, the other leg on the other side of the line, and for asking a question, uh, what if you have that situation, Rav Yirmiyah was thrown out of the yeshiva. Well, Avi was thrown out of the yeshiva, and in fact, uh, my Aunt Lila used to tell me that his mother, Claire, was called in so often to the principal's office that all of Avi's friends thought that she worked there. But when I first brought him here many years ago, uh, when Amos was head of the Mabal, I saw two characteristics which Alan has, which uh, Amos also has there. They're both in words which begin with C, both courage and clarity of thought. Uh, they both have these incredible uh, commodities. And uh, at the time at Mabal, uh, Amos was working on a, a certain committee where he brought Asa Kasher and he brought Penina from the International Law Committee, uh, law, law Department, a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant lawyer. And they were talking about the underpinnings of morality and law in the IDF, light years ahead of virtually any other service. And Alan was saying he was writing Preemption at the time, a book about which talks about preemption and prevention. And he put the two together and Amos, and he said, you know, 90% of the things that Amos was doing here at Glilot, Alan had been doing separately at Harvard. And it was this incredible meeting of the minds. And then a few years later when Amos was Rosh Amman, and after the Second Lebanese War, when Israel was not succeeding in making the case for Israel, uh, I was with uh, uh, Alan when he called uh, Amos and he said, we have to get the information out. And Amos was set on the Sheba of, of all of the international, of all of the top secret uh, material made a decision, a courageous decision, to declassify enough that would make the case for Israel that there was a paradigm shift that the terrorists were now using uh, civilians as human shields and the world had not woken up to it. And it was because of this great meeting of the minds that this information got out, made a front page story in the New York Times, and in effect helped make the case for Israel. So it's a pleasure to bring people together, like Alan Dershowitz and Amos Yadlin, and moderated by uh, none other than Penina to give you an inspiring evening tonight, which will challenge everyone here. Thank you.